Hey, thank you so much for joining me for Kineo Office Hours. Let's go ahead and get started. A little bit about myself. My name is Taylor Craig. I'm the Learning Platform Specialist here at Kineo. I do all things TOTRA training as well as our office hours, working with potential clients and working with existing clients. So that is my role here at Kineo. Our Kineo office hours are available only to our existing clients. We have 15 minutes of a feature presentation and then about 45 minutes of open floor for questions and discussion. So bring me your questions, no questions too big, no questions too small. If I don't know the answer, I can almost guarantee you that I know somebody who does. So please come join us and bring us all of your questions. So today what we're going to be talking about is personalized learning. You can actually utilize just core basic TOTR features to actually personalize someone's learning through your through a particular course inside of your TOTR instance. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to move this off the screen. And then we'll go ahead and take a look. What we're going to do, we're going to look at this from the perspective of a couple of different learners. We're going to look at it from the perspective of a learner who is going to pass. And then we're also going to look at it from the perspective of a learner who is going to fail. Um, and so we'll see kind of how the progression of the course works from both directions and, and how, how you can do this. We can, we can talk a little bit more about how this is set up as well. But it's basically all using completion conditions and restrictions inside of TOTRA. Again, this is all core uh, and something that you already have available to you. So I'm going to go into this personalized learning example course. And what we've done here is we've made it very basic, very simple. So this is a very simple example of how this could potentially work, but it's an easy way to help you wrap your mind around it uh, in a very quick, short period of time. So what we have here is just a standard statement indicating that um, you're going to be directed to different learning based on your performance. So if we check the box, that's going to go ahead and that's going to open up the first topic of the course to me. And all I'm seeing at this point is one quiz. I'm not seeing anything else inside of the course. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take this quiz, How Well Do You Know the Totor Basics? And I see that I have two attempts allowed. I get five minutes per attempt. Um, and it's going to take my highest grade. So we're in here is Aaron Hart. He's going to go through and he's going to actually pass this test. So he's going to attempt the quiz. And since I am actually Aaron Hart, let's see if I can pass the test. Uh, that's going to be this one. Okay. It's only four questions, so it shouldn't take me too long to finish it. And hopefully I can answer these very, very basic Tokyo questions. If I can't, then we've got an issue. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to submit all and finish. Submit all and finish. And I should have gotten a 100, and I did. So I'm going to finish my review. And I'm going to actually navigate back into the course kind of a different way. I needed to throw in some extra navigation there, and I didn't do that. So what happened here for Aaron is that once he passed this exam, he gets a green check mark, and Totra knew he passed because within the grade book, actually, we went in and we told Totra that a 70 is passing on this quiz. So that's how Topher knew that he had passed it. And as a result, he gets this page resource. Great job. You know the Topher basics. But he's not seeing anything else in the course. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to click on this and see what's going on here. And we see that it's just a video that he can watch to learn a little bit more, maybe going into the next portion of learning. And so to return back to the course, he's going to click right here. That's going to take him back into the course. What that did, since he went ahead and he reviewed the, the content showing that he had done a good job and, and to kind of review the content for the next step, that then opened up the next quiz. So he's going to go in and he's going to take this quiz. I utilized the exact same quiz, but in, a, in the real world, in a perfect world, it would definitely be different content, of course. So each person posts once. We're going to just run through this very quickly one more time. Hopefully I get a 100 this time as well. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so we're going to submit all and finish, submit all and finish. And he can review his attempt. He sees that he got a 100. We're going to jump back into the course. And with that, that released another one showing that he's catching on. And he can go into this page resource. He can also do some additional reviewing here. When he jumps back out into the course, that's going to open up the completion certificate. And then he can retrieve his certificate. Um, and then basically what we would do is we would trigger completion based on the pages that he's seeing each time he does good and each time he completes something versus setting completion on the course based on the quizzes. Because what we've done is we've gone into those quizzes and we have said that you are, that each quiz is two completion elements. One of the completion elements is completed with a pass grade. The other completion element is completed with a fail grade. So anything under a 70. So we don't want to set the completion in the course, so his actual, to show on his record of learning. We don't want to set the completion to be based on the quizzes, because if he could fail it, and technically that would be, quote, completing it, because that is one of the completion settings that we set on that quiz in order to allow him to kind of go in different directions based on passing and based on failing. So what we're doing is we're giving it something else, but he can't access that page until he actually passes. So as a result, once he accesses that page, he has essentially passed the quiz. So we're still pulling this off of passing and failing, and that's what's happening in, in that instance. So we've gone through his errand. We see on his record of learning he has gone through, he has completed, and he has passed this course. You're going to see that these are the activity completion standards that we set on the page. Great job, you know the basics. Great job, you're really catching on. And then also retrieving his certificate. So once you actually get to the certificate, then that is what triggers the final completion in that course. So that would be one way to do that. Now let's take a look at it from the perspective of a learner who's not going to do so well. So now we're in as Carolyn Reynolds. She's going to go into the same course. She's going to check the box just like Erin did. And she's not going to do well on this test. So it's the exact same test. But we're going to make sure she fails it. Okay, so she got a zero out of 100. So going back into the course real quick here, we're going to see that she sees something completely different. She got a big red X in the completion box, and it is showing she gets a completely different resource. Looks like you need to study a little bit more. So she gets a completely different resource than Erin. So when she clicks on this, it's going to give her a resource with three different videos because she obviously doesn't know her basics. So she can go through, watch all of these videos, and then she can click to retake the test. So this is going to bring her back into the test. She can re-attempt her quiz, start that attempt, and this time let's let her pass it. That way you can see how she can in fact move on, but she has to pass. Okay, so now she can submit all and finish, submit all and finish. We see that she got a 100. When we finish our review, 
You're going to see here that you are always going to see her different attempts. So sometimes that's people's concern is, okay, what now what happens to her other attempt? We don't see that she's done, done very well. But you can actually go into the quiz as an administrator or a trainer in the course, and you can go in and you can see, okay, well, Carolyn didn't do very good, but now that she's progressed through the course, we see that she actually did quite well. She learned something from this course, and we, we've designed this course well. So here we see that she has now gotten her 100. And we'll go back to her courses. Now she's showing a check mark, and now she's progressing the exact same way that Erin did. So, and the and the and the you didn't do so well content went away, and the hey look you're doing a great job that content is now appearing to her. So this is showing how you can do this using just completion and restriction settings inside of a course. These are all basic default settings that you have available to you currently. If you're using, I believe it is TOTRA 2.4 and beyond. So you should actually already have access to all of this. This isn't necessarily something that's brand new to TOTRA 2.7, um, but definitely something that is available and accessible for you to utilize. There are different uses for this and different use cases for this. In this particular case, it's mainly to make sure that our learners actually completely and totally understand the content, and we're kind of looping them back, back around through that content and then quizzing them on it and ensuring that they truly do know that content. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you guys and open the floor up for questions.